Ah, ho, ho, ho. All right, friends, today's big focus is on the world's most underappreciated cuisine, Russian food. And we have driven all the way across Russia's famous golden ring of medieval cities to hopefully find the best, or at least laugh at the worst. So let's get this dinner party started right. Our first stop today is a restaurant in Rostov Veliki called Sabranye, which means a gathering of friends in Russian. But it is also the name of a type of cigarette preferred by Russian women of uh, loose morals. Anyways, I would say their specialty is seafood, but all the fish come from lakes and rivers, so uh, let's call it lake food. Sure. Yeah, let's just start eating already. Misha, how dare you take that away from me? So, we have a tall order here. First off, we have uh, mead, which is always good. I'm a big mead fan. Uh, mead works with everything. And we have various different Russian-style pies. And the most unique thing is red bread. This is something I've never seen before in Russia. Slightly kind of soupy flavor. I like this. It's very good. Oh, this is filled with mushrooms. Look at that. The classic ground meat. Perfect, just what you'd expect. But anyways, I think it's time for the next course. Don't you agree, Misha? Yes, I think he does. All right, you show. You show, you show, you show. <laughs> Classic dish I've never shown you guys. This are the local mushrooms in some sour cream with a little onion. And of course there's dill. I know guys, chill out with the dill. Dill's, you get used to it. Ah, oh, it smells nice. Mmm, delicious. And the flavor of the mushroom is very unique. It has a little bit of um, like a vinegar. An important thing about Russian culture is that there's this idea that Russians drink alcohol like cowboys in the Wild West. Like you just grab a bottle and drink it. That is not the way it is. Uh, in reality, everyone in Russia wants to have little snacks, things to kind of take a, a bite of while they're drinking. And this little platter of uh, all sorts of different uh, pickled stuff is a real Russian classic. Pickled cabbage, a different type of pickled cabbage, carrots, I forgot what these things are called, these weird yellow things that also taste kind of weird, and my favorite, the best, the pickled tomato. Uh. That's where it's at, man. And now this yellow thing that, I'll look up the name of this online, in English, I mean, I'll have one of these. Hmm. Gosh, it's hard to describe the taste of this thing. It's very, it's like a combination of a tomato, but also something more earthy, almost like, not a pepper. I don't know, it's hard to describe, but it's better than it looks. Hmm. Oh my God. Oh, we've got another round, yes, yes. More, 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 yes. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. So anyways, these are uh, two of the uh, alcohols they actually make here at the Sabrania restaurant. The problem is the Russian too. Kind of bumped the table there, that was not good. <laughs> the, uh, the Russian term for them, I tried to find a good translation for it in English and they say they're tinctures. I don't think that's a good translation. But anyways, let's try them out, especially since we have our platter of deliciousness here. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Yeah. Now, in true Russian tradition, we always get our uh, sort of chaser prepared as we have our first drink. So anyways, this one is with horseradish. Alcohol with horseradish is amazing, usually. Oh, yeah, you can smell it. It really hits the nose. Anyways, here's to you, and here's to I think we're at uh, over 7,000, almost 8,000 subscribers. It's a good day. Makes me wonder, why do they do not never have stuff like this at the stores in Moscow? I don't know. Ushitsa, I've never heard that term before. I've always heard ucha, but this must be elite ucha from three different types of fish that were all caught from the lake. Um, I'll put it this way. If any of you are at all a fan of something like chicken soup, that very bullion heavy type of soup, this is right up your alley. And guess what? I am that kind of person. Life is good, my friends. That's 
Perfect. If you are someone who likes soup and you also like fish, this is like the best. You know, while we're waiting for the last course, I mean, um, to be honest, I think it would be rude to not partake in the uh, drinks. I mean, they did give them to us to try, right? Um, you know, the funny part is, stuff like this, like this mushroom and sour cream that's slightly pickled with alcohol, like that's the kind of thing where 15 years ago when I came to Russia, I don't think I would have ever, like my stomach, my taste buds were completely different. And I think back then that would have been terrifying. And now it's like a joyous occasion. Um, your taste can really change. I remember the first time I ate buckwheat, it was just sort of like eating a, like metal shavings, you know, when you're like grinding metal and the, the shavings go all over the place. But now I love it. Sometimes I even crave it. So the one thing is guys, you gotta be open-minded because there's so much good food in Russia. Ah, ho, ho, ho. Wow. Uh, now guys, this is the true piece de resistance. Look at that. Whoa. So Asyotr has sort of this like a more intense fish taste. So if you really like your fish kind of fishy, this is for you. The thing about Asyotr that's cool, it's different. The taste of it is different. It's not like any fish you've ever had in America or Europe or in India. It has its own sort of flavor. That's exactly why you come to Russia, to try things that are different. Here's to doing things differently. Uh, I think I've become the Tsar. This is awesome. This is some, this is a serious dinner, guys. This is a serious Russian dinner. And it is exactly the reason to come to Russia. This is definitely a must eat. Absolutely perfect. In fact, about uh, must eating, I, got, I must finish eating this. <laughs> From one gathering to another, the people at Sabranya were so happy to actually have a YouTuber come to film at their restaurant that they invited me to go and visit their location in Yaroslavl. Their gimmick is cooking everything in a classic wood-burning oven. And I can tell you this, it's the most Russian way possible to cook. Seriously. And we are at the Sabranya restaurant, but this time in Yaroslavl, in the big city, where they specialize in giving us things from the Russian oven. Now, what you're looking at here, a little bit's from the oven, but what it is, is just a lot of appetizers. Yeah, that's a lot of appetizers for one guy. Holy moly. So, let's um, build up our appetite, and hopefully not get too full. Uh, before I may mention, one of the best things to mix with alcohol in Russia are like, pickled vegetables of various kinds. Now one of the other things you can pickle, or sort of cure, or whatever it's called, is fish. And uh, very good with alcohol. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Way better than at the store. Chaladietz. Um, Chaladietz is not my best friend, I'll put it that way. I've had it many times, not really my thing. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna save the situation. We're gonna have Chaladietz, but this, is a special vodka drink they made out of uh, uh, a berry called Ablepicha. For any of you Americans out there, you ever remember Tang, you know that orange stuff that would come in like a can and you could mix it with water? Well, the Ablepicha berry actually tastes like that, except natural. So this is kind of like my favorite berry in vodka versus my, um, let's just say, not favorite Russian food. Let's do it. Hmm. I feel very American right now. But the song ends well. That was awesome. Imagine that. You've got the vodka, you've got a little bit of the spiciness, and then you've basically got the taste of Tang. That's great. You know what Tang did? It took the astronauts to space. Well, if the job was for these appetizers to perk my appetite, they've definitely done the trick. So anyways, let's get on to the uh, main courses here, so. Пожалуйста. Вот это нужно поставить перед молодым человеком, а это будет подстановочное под вашу шапочку. So, the official process, as they just told me, is for this soup, we take the cap off the top, kind of like a mushroom, mushroom cap, we take the cap off the top and put it over here. It is very hot. 
But it's good. All right. Oh, baby. Ah! Oh! Wow. Wow. That's messy. And messy is fun. Get out of that. Let's taste, taste the inside of this. Uh-huh. Mmm. Oh, 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 oh. oh, it has like the flavor of the soup in it. Oh, it's really good. All right, let's get into the actual soup here. I'm seeing, we're seeing a mushroom. I think we're seeing a piece of pork in there. Maybe a piece of beef. The smell is so familiar. Barley, mushroom flavor, very meaty. I think there's a little tomato in there because there should be always tomato in soup. It doesn't matter what soup, there should be tomato in it. And it's the exact same smell in my grandmother's house when I was a kid. This I'm gonna finish, okay? No one's gonna touch this, but we need to be moving on with the program. Ooh, 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 ooh. things are going well. <laughs> well, except for Hall Jets, but Hall Jets is never well. Oh, oh, uh -huh. Our good old buddy, Buckwheat here. So it looks like we have a beak, but be beak. I have a beak the way I talk. We have a beef buckwheat combo here. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. That flavor of like when you make a steak with pepper on it, it's got that really sort of peppery steak kind of flavor, but it's buckwheat, interesting. That's really different. That is different from what I'm used to. But you know what? Buckwheat and beef baked in an oven is very different from what you're used to, I'm sure. If you're watching this from far away from Russia. The buckwheat and uh, basically steak was very good, very different and different in a good way. But the king is this soup. The soup that smells like my grandmother's kitchen when I was a kid and uh, tastes like the food she made with the pastry on top, which I kind of ignored here. So you've got the, the soup and the pastry. You've got the soup and the pastry and that is just, that's just something, what can I say? I would say, this here right in front of you, this is a must eat. And this is from the kitchen of uh, Tim's grandmother. <laughs> A must eat from Grandma Claire. Or Claudia, whatever you want to call her. Mm. Ah, that's nice. Okay, so far so good. Now we're going to go from a place with a wood-burning stove to a city named after the word for bonfire. We are heading to Kastrama to eat big on their boat slash restaurant that they call Stara Pristin, or in English, the Old Pier. Despite its nautical name, the place is famous for its moose meat. So look out, Bullwinkle, here I come. Well, friends, here we are in Kastrama at the Stari Pristin restaurant. Here we have something definitely not to the American palate, but something that's probably gonna be very good. Ooh, look at that mushroom. You know, one thing is Americanism, we're too mushroom conservative. Basically every mushroom that you'll get on anything in America is always that sort of generic white mushroom that's called a champion in uh, Russian. Mm, sounds pretty French, so it's probably French. But uh, in Russia, there's all sorts of different ones. I don't know which, what this one is called. One of our viewers surely knows, but that is intensely pickled. Good, but very powerful. That is a um, high impact mushroom. Anyways, here's to you guys. It smells like candy. All right. This particular one, you know, it tastes like licorice, like Jägermeister. Exactly like Jägermeister. Anyways, very good. This is definitely something you should try to. Expand your palate if you're from an English-speaking country, because in an English-speaking country, you won't get anything like that ever. Uh, so this is something new for you to try. Hmm. All right. Well, this is interesting, because they told me they were gonna give me that uh, soup called chi, which is very focused on uh, cabbage, cabbage and liquidiness. But this is actually very thick. So it's very thick, very soupy. Yeah, I, I know, soup being soupy shouldn't be surprising. Very interesting. Oh, that's very different. Very different. Mm, different in a good way. Oh, how can I describe it? Um, this may sound strange to say that something, that a soup that is tart, I would say it's actually very tart, uh, and yet it's a soup. Interesting, but I like it. Very dark mushroom. Maybe that's where that 
because that mushroom also had that nice kind of tarty, uh, sour sting to it. Maybe that's where the flavor comes from. Interesting, very different. All right, so I'm looking at a big plate full of moose meat. This is different. This is like a Canadian steak here. All right, let's do this. Oh, the meat actually even smells from here different. It has sort of a unique meaty, but um, different smell. Not beef, not pork. Kind of hard to even describe. Um, kind of hard to describe a smell you've never smelled before, so. Mm, very soft. Familiar, because it's meat, but it's, it's, it's it's very different to taste. And not in an extreme way, like it's not like a strong flavor, it's not like a really different flavor. Like uh, um, uh, in the past I've had some exotic meats and they really like stood out. This is very mild, but completely different. Wild stuff. Let me put it this way. This tastes good, this tastes very different, it has a very unique smell, and it's a reason to come to Kastrama. Uh, you know, sometimes you can, uh, with food, we can very much sort of kind of find ourselves getting used to eating certain things or used to certain smells. And this is good because it took me out of my comfort zone. It has a completely different kind of t flavor and smell that I'm used to, but it was still really good. Definitely gonna say moose meat is the winner. Now we're making our way to probably the best place in Russia for any tourist to go, Suzdal. When I first came to Russia 15 years ago, most restaurants were, well, lacking to say the least. But the food in Suzdal was amazing and authentic. So I have very high hopes coming into this meal of traditional local foods with a modern twist. Don't disappoint me, Suzdal. Come on, baby. All right, friends, continuing on, here we are at the Agurets, aka Cucumber Restaurant, on one of the main streets of Suzdal. In fact, it's on the main street. And it looks like we're here for brunch, and uh, nothing says brunch like an entire bottle of honey-based champagne. And uh, they said there's a tradition in Suzdal that you have pickles with honey. So uh, let's get to that first. But actually, before that, what is this black stuff? I've heard in Russia they have black salt. Is this black salt? What is this? Um, I have absolutely no idea what that is. Уважаемые дамы, что за вот этот черный порох, который вот тут? Okay, now I understand. So it's dried ground mushrooms, and uh, interesting. Okay. Маслины это что такое? Oh, that. So, from what I understand, it is dried ground black olives. That's different. Okay, that's different. Tastes good. Here we go. You know, surprisingly, that works. Now look at that. That's actually really good. Got your sweet, got your sour, and a kick of spicy at the end. Very nice. If I had to guess, I'm thinking buckwheat. Thinking buckwheat. All right. Gorechka, da? Gorechka. All right, I was right. They are buckwheat. Buckwheat chips. Mmm. I don't know, if you like buckwheat, you'll like these. Interesting. That's surprising. I didn't even know that was possible with buckwheat. I guess uh, science is advancing. Uh, so anyways, let's try to uh, have some of this honey-based champagne that, according to the bottle, is five years old. It's been waiting five years for me to try it out here. And, oh boy, that really wanted to come out. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to pull it, but this time, oh God, it's rising to the top. On its own. Oh God! Uh, the, all right, pouring. Yeah. Wow. That that has a very, very strong nose to it in the good way. Uh, I'm like I'm someone who likes strong flavors. Oh, that's nice. Wow. That'll knock your socks off. That's good. Whoo! Uh, good morning. All right. <laughs> that, that's that's good. Uh, that has a very strong, I would say, the honey flavor is there. It has the honey flavor, but it has more of those like Russian spices, the sweet spices that you'd get in those pranic cookies and all that kind of stuff from Russia. So it has very much that flavor. So if you've had one of those pranic cookies, I think this is sort of like the alcohol version of that. Uh, very intense, really good. But uh, 
Yeah, that'll, uh, I can't believe it's 6% alcohol. That's what the bottle says. Um, I think you guys might be lying there because it's, uh, it's, 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 it's good. Woo. There you go. So far, so good. But you want to know one thing. Everything in front of me is very Russian, but very different. And I like that. That's the whole point of this particular video is to show you some Russian food. Pickles, honey, super Russian, buckwheat, anything super Russian. You know what was Russia's first export over a thousand years ago? Honey. There you go. Before oil came around. So anyways, let's move on to something that's heated. It is awfully cold outside. So one thing the waitress wanted to make clear to me is that despite the fact that from my Moscow perspective of reality, these things seem very unusual uh, for her. These are traditional Suzdal foods that people have been eating for a long time. Just because I haven't seen them doesn't mean that they're uh, not ancient. Okay, and here we have another Suzdal-based food where we, she claims it's like half borscht, which you're familiar with, and half rasolnik, which is a sort of a sour soup. So this is very exciting. As someone who loves soup, and who loves both, both borscht and rasonik, this should be a treat. So anyways, and as is tradition, we've got to have one dollop of sour cream in the center of the soup. If you ever see an old like Soviet cookbook, if you ever get the chance, if there's soup, there's one dollop of sour cream in the center. That is the rules. But I'm gonna go against the rules and do two, because I really like sour cream. Anyways, let's mix it up. That is different, oh my gosh. Wow, I don't know how to describe it. it. It looks exactly like borscht, but it has a very different flavor. Wow, that's interesting. This was a success. This was, like I said, different. It's like a, it is like a hybrid soup. It's kind of hard to place. Uh, uh, but the one thing is my brain is so used to borscht that I'm expecting one flavor and then you eat it and you get another flavor. So kind of neat. So we have uh, the fish called Sudak. I think we'll have a translation on the screen because I can never remember the name of the fish. And of course, it has some pickles in it. Logical. And uh, yeah, a little bit of caviar there. Locally caught. Oh boy. Oh, look at that big, nice chunk. Yes. Remember, fish in Russia is rarely deboned. That's okay. You get used to it. But it does make things a little bit harder to eat on camera. But guys, so far we've filmed a lot of restaurants on this trip around the Golden Ring, and there's a problem. Everything's been pretty good. Even the things that weren't so good, it was more my personal tastes. Like, you know, no matter who puts Holodets in front of me, it's gonna be a bad result, but a uh, uh, lot of winners here. All right, oh boy, look at that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, friends, maybe it was a little bit of a mistake to eat that entire big piece of fish, because we have more food coming, but uh, I'm definitely satisfied. Uh, so one of the reasons to come to Russia. Good river fish, big rivers, big fish in those rivers. Let's move on to the jam as our sort of closing uh, moment for this uh, lovely brunch here in Suzdal. Avarenia is chivo? Is it good Da Okay, so we have, I was wondering, what is this jam? It's good, but it's made of pickles. It's pickle jam. Uh, that's awesome, that's unique. And it tastes good. I know you're not gonna believe it, but it tastes really good. How could pickled jam taste good? Well, apparently it can. So that's great, all right. So anyways, guys, let's break this down. What do we get? Here is my big problem. Because when you go to a restaurant, you know, there's a chef and the chef wants to take pride in their food. The problem is, I think my favorite thing is right here. This sort of mead, honey, champagne, this is the stuff right here. Unbelievably good. So anyways, friends, let's finish this episode, our final restaurant of this tour around the Golden Ring, with a toast. And this toast is to you and to the future of this program, must eat, because there's a lot of regions left in Russia, and I must eat. Anyways, talk to you soon. Ooh. Ah. Oh. Guys, well, this is kind of interesting. It's one, first off, it's one plate. It's one object. That's, I did not expect that. But anyways. <laughs> so maybe I'm not the culinary expert. I thought I was.